Welcome to LearnHowToQuilt.com's Feathered Star Series. In this video, you'll learn how to make the center of the star and then sew all the sections together. You'll also get instructions for the Feathered Star Tree Skirt or Octagon Table Topper. To make the center octagon, you'll want to start off with a square. You'll cut this square 15 and 1 16th inches or 15 and an eighth inches. A lot of your rulers don't have a 16th of an inch and it's halfway between 15 and an eighth and 15. And actually it's a rounded off number, so 15 and an eighth is okay. Turn your square to the wrong side. And in each corner, you want to measure four inches down by four inches across, and then draw that diagonal line. Trim off the excess. Take this section, fold it in half, and finger press that halfway mark. I've done the same thing with these half square triangles. Fold it in half, finger press. And now I'm going to match those halfway marks and pin. I added the other four triangles and pressed. Lay out your star. Put right sides together of the first two pieces in the top row. Then put right sides together in the center, and then for the last row. You'll sew these two sections from row one. Right sides go together. Now I like to pin on this side, so it's gonna look a little bit different. But the reason why I like to pin on this side is I like to start sewing up here in the corner and then come down. So let's turn it this way, put right sides together, making sure that the edges in this corner all line up and then pin. Now I'm gonna come down here first and look at this situation that I've got here. And remember, I wanna match these points here. So I'm gonna put right sides together. I've put this pin right through the tip there. I'm gonna come over here, put this pin right through the tip there. And I'm going to try to get this pin to be perpendicular to everything. And then I'll pin in place. The other thing I wanna make sure while I'm here is that this red matches up with this red and with this red. So you see these two reds there? I want this seam to nestle in up against each other. So this seam and this seam should nestle in up against each other while this pin is straight up. And it's doing that right now. I'll hold that in place with my nail and pin. Now, this is all bias in here, so you don't wanna be pulling this. You wanna carefully put, get these right sides together here and pin. Now I can go back in here and pin this section. I might want to press this down first. Let me take care of that. Here's my seam that I sewed in place. I pressed it towards this kite. I'm getting a little closer here on matching things. Not perfect. I can go in here and stitch this seam about a thread over and then everything will match there. Or I can leave it as is. Here's my partial seam that needs to be complete. So I'll put right sides together like this and I'll pin this in place. Now I can see that if I pin this in place, this is gonna be short a little here. And if I sew a quarter inch seam, I'll stop about there. I want this to be a quarter inch from the edge. So sometimes if I take and sew this like this, where it's a little bit, it doesn't line up here, it's a little off. You can see that here where this is a little off, doesn't line up, but 
when I pull this back, I've got that quarter inch seam there and this lines up. So let me show you that again. This is lining up out here, but not right here. So if I move this just a little over and I see that if I sew a quarter inch seam here, it's going to end right there. And that'll put me a quarter inch or about a quarter inch from the edge. Let me pin that in place and stitch. So here's where I sewed that seam and then I pressed to the background. And this diamond is now a quarter of an inch from the edge. Here are the first two pieces in that last row. You'll sew these sections in the bottom row in the same manner as you did the top row. Here's an old pressing chart that you can refer to. Make sure you follow the black arrows. So you can see when you put these top three sections together, you're gonna to press towards the middle section. When you put these three center sections together, you're gonna to press towards the outside sections. And down at the bottom, when you put these three together, you're going to press towards the center sections. Here's that center section that I put right sides together. Let's turn it around this way. You want to start off by getting these corners lined up. And sometimes I might be a little off here, as you can see. So let's go over here and see what we can do. So these pieces, the red and the red, and the background fabric should all come together at one spot. And that spot's going to be a quarter of an inch from the side. I want these matching at about a quarter of an inch from the side. And it looks like if I pin it about here, then when I sew, this point will match. Let me pin this here. Now you can get in and mark that point if you're more confident about that, or just do it the way I did it, kind of eyeball that quarter inch. And now I'm going to pin this edge here. Depending where you're at, one of these edges is going to be on the bias. And I can see that it's this triangle here that's on the bias. So you want to be careful when you handle that in here, come over to this spot, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm looking for the place where these two are about a quarter of an inch from the edge. And let's see, I'd say that's about there. Now I'm going to look in the middle here, and I see that it looks like this piece is a little bit longer here. So let's see if I can redistribute some of that. First, let's get it down. And because this is on the bias, I can stretch that out a little to help take up some of that extra. So let's see how that's going to go. Pin this. And then I'll finish up by pinning this last piece here. I want to line up those edges as so. So it looked like the reason why the reason why one piece was bigger than the other has to do with this section in here. So I might want to pin on the other side so I can have this section down against my feed dogs because that'll sort of help distribute that fabric. Or I can leave it as is. Well, I'm going to try it as is sewed that seam and then I press towards these kites. You can see that that matches pretty good right there. This might be off just a tad so I could go in there and uh, fool around with that or just leave it as is. And if you haven't noticed already I'm kind of leaving everything as is. Lay out your quilt. Put right sides together and stitch. These last sections in each row will get stitched together just like the first two sections. I'm going to go over that center section again. 
So here are my pieces with right sides together. I've marked a quarter of an inch down from the edge here on each one of these sections. That's where I'm going to start pinning. So I can see a quarter of an inch is at this point right here, and a quarter of an inch is at this point. I take a pin and stick it right there, and then come over here and stick it right there. That's where those, that's where you want those two sections to go together. And as always, you want that pin to be perpendicular to the fabric and then pin around it. If you decide you want to have perfect points at the end of every triangle like this, then here's some things that you can do to fix those. So you can see these triangles are a little short here. This is one of the easiest fixes because I won't have to rip out any seams. So I just went in and started sewing about one or two threads over from the original seam so that I'll hit those points here. And let's see what that looks like. So you can see here that these points are up against this background. Now, over here where I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different things meeting in one point, I'm not going to be able to go in and pull that seam in. Because if I try to sew, sometimes this might be a help to you if you go underneath and pinch on that seam and see what's going to happen. So if I go in there and sew, I will, if I sew a couple threads over, I'll get a place where these will match, but I'll cut off the point here. So I'm going to have to go in and rip some of this out and then re-sew it. So I took this seam out here. I've still got some of the threads in here. I repositioned those points and then I started sewing across. This looks much better. Now you're ready to sew the rows to each other. Put right sides together and start matching the two main seams. So here are the seams where I first start matching. And if you've been following the pressing directions, these should be opposing seams and they'll jut up right next to each other. They'll pin and the same is true over here, you've got opposing seams and they sort of nestle in up against each other and pin. So the next thing I'm going to do is come here and match these and then match those. Then I'll come down on this side here to this point where I've got a whole lot of different points coming together at once. I'll match that and then pin the rest of this side. You're going to have partial seam here so make sure you hold this back when you sew. I'll come down here on this other side. Make sure when you go to sew that quarter inch seam that you don't cut these tips off. So let me take this over to the sewing machine. The top two rows are finished. I just need to add the bottom row. I put right sides together and sewed in the same manner as the top row. And here's my completed feather star. To make this an octagon shape, you'll need to trim off the four corners. In the fourth video in this series, you were given the option of adding triangles in the corners instead of squares. Or you could just sew the whole top together and then trim off the corners. If this is the case, I usually wait until the top's been quilted. Then I trim the edges a quarter of an inch away from each diamond. To make the tree skirt, I wait until I'm finished quilting and then I draw a circle in the center. From that circle, I draw a line to the edge of the quilt. I cut on that line into the circle and then I cut the circle out. Then I bound the quilt with bias binding to ensure that I could make that curve around the center. You also want to figure out a way to secure the skirt. I sewed ribbons on before adding the binding because it was really easy. But you might want to try something else like uh, Velcro, hooks, or maybe buttons. I hope you get a chance to make one of these stars. Let me know how it turns out.
Thanks for visiting LearnHowToQuilt.com. Please like, subscribe, and share our videos with your friends. Remember, if you're trying to find us on the internet, type in LearnHowToQuilt.com. Don't forget the .com. Using the .com will get you right to our site.